Um, this is how the scenes, uh, the chapters go. We have the introductory image, you remember. We had the summary, the prediction exercise. We have the, the scene where we read the text. Um, and then we have the understand and analyze exercises. We have vocabulary building. We have a cultural link. So we have so much. These could be separate lessons, actually, depending on how much time you want to spend on them. But one lesson each big group of exercises can be a good idea. And then you arrive at from reading to performing. From reading to performing always focuses on a different aspect of creating, uh, putting a performance together. Here we have lighting. I think it's really cool because techie students, students who are interested in technical devices and how, what goes on behind the, the the curtains and how what happens when you really put together a show they will also love this and 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 you get a very a different aspect of how you put together the performance and what what goes on on the stage so lighting here um, here you have an introduction about how you can work on lighting what the different aspects of it is so color and focus for example, or uh, intensity or position and direction of the lighting. And then this exercise and this uh, chap uh, ex um, section here introduces also filters and different light effects, that color effects that you can use in connection of, with lighting. And I think it's, it gives you a really good um, activity idea. When you read a scene, you have discussed the language and you have talked about the vocabulary and you have opened it up for further grammar discussions. And then you go back to the scene and you look at it from a different perspective, from a very practical perspective, like how would you put it on stage? And you start thinking about visualizing it and, and making it real and physical. And that's when you can talk about like, okay, so filters and gels are used to light the stage in a certain color. And then we talked about this scene with Iago and with um, Othello and their really intense and passionate talk about jealousy and, and, and all the blood they can already see and the, the murder they plan to gather. Um, so which colors, you could ask your students, like imagine this scene and associate certain colors with this scene and what colors would you use on stage and in in terms of lighting for example um, to 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 make this scene more colorful and more interesting so they can discuss with a partner or you you can discuss together anger and here again you can say that these associations are culture specific sometimes and maybe your students have different ideas about what the color of anger is than from you so anger should usually be red um, or blackish red and then you can talk about jealousy what color is jealousy Someone says that usually anger is also green. We think about jealousy, green-eyed monster. We think about, and then you can talk about why is it green. Someone says yellow, coldness. Blue, light blue. It does matter what shade of blue we are talking about or white because Cold can cold also have really warm shades, so you have to be very specific about. It. They can go on Instagram probably and find the right blue for coldness and warmth. What color do you think warm is? Red and orange. You see, we already have red here, but maybe it's a different kind of red or orange or yellow. It's probably the the color of a sunset. It's a, it's a really relaxing exercise to, to think about with your students. But if you really want to expand their vocabulary here, then, then ask them to look at 
uh, a list of different colors because they will all say blue and, and green, but green can have a different shades and, and, and blue can have different shades. And it's maybe with, with secondary school students, I think it's, um, it's, it's a good idea to, to think about different names for colors. Gentleness, someone says, can be pink. And evil can be... I, I'm curious to read what you say. Black. Evil black. Va yeah, Vanta black. Black that will absorb all light around you. Um, and here, if you want to go further with this activity idea, and you, 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 if you don't just want to stop at like associate with a feeling with a color, I mentioned the power of the story. So, why do you think that the color of evil is black? Can you tell me a famous character from any kind of TV show or story where evil is black? And then they might say Star Wars. I don't know what you say. Exactly Darth Vader, Voldemort. <laughs> exactly they are all black or can you tell me warmth so like with evil it's better to talk about a story and i don't want to ask uh, students about their own experiences although you might want to then there's dracula you are saying then and you are talking about uh interesting characters then warmth and then use or gentleness gentleness is a really nice one i think because then gentleness and somebody said pink and my next question would be to you why is it pink what made you say that because probably you have a story there where, where something gentle was pink um and and then it's a good talking point again pink is associated with family for example uh and and families should be warm and gentle i don't know so i i think or the flower of roses and then you are having an association activity here which will build um, some kind of storytelling and even if it's a, a simple sentence you can even give your students the structure like I associate evil with black because I saw the film Star Wars and Darth Vader had a black mask and there you have a really nice sentence and how imagine words differs in cultures but not in emotions Yes, it's a good talking point, like cultural references and emotional references as well. Um, so this was just another example of what you can do by reading a scene, focusing on an emotion or a sentence. And, and then you are using actually what we are talking about here, don't forget, is a performance technique and staging and 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 actually you are directing the play and you are thinking about okay what color should that be so when you are when you are trying to put it on stage and when you you'd like to create a show with your students then it can turn out to be a really creative workshop um i wish i could just read back all your answers because they are so cool and so really interesting and finally we have to move on because we still have a play to discuss. So how to use these paintings? You will see what I mentioned. You might remember that each chapter features a painting, a famous painting. Um, and all these paintings are collected at the back of the book. Um, you can use these paintings, you remember, as an introduction to activate background knowledge, to just get students uh, think about the scene itself. Uh, paintings are really good to talk about feelings, to, to, to collect vocabulary items and introduce new vocabulary items. And then you can also use them as, as the foundations or the actual first step into a creative writing activity. Write about the painting, the use of colors, from a technical perspective. You can write about the painting from a narrative perspective, like why is this painting significant? Who does it represent? Why is she, what, what's happening in this picture? 
Or you can also talk about it from an even more creative aspect, like what are they thinking? Imagine what they are thinking, how are they feeling? So there's a lot of things to do. You can use them for writing, for speaking as well. So, so work with the paintings uh, and use them before reading and use them also after reading for more speaking, more writing or even summary activities. And now we move on to Twelfth Night. And when you are reading this play, I always discuss, of course, the title first, because we are just after the 12 days of Christmas, like a month after it. But if you are reading it around Christmas, then it's a good idea to talk about uh, the 12 days and, and all the traditions connected to it. Let me just have a sip. So, to the unknown beloved, here we have this man sitting at a table, reading. We, have, we were talking about paintings and we continue with paintings. So, what's going on here? What is he doing? Why does it matter? What's on the table? What is that tablecloth? What's this room like? Why does he have long hair? Who does he remind you of? There are so many questions to ask. What is, what is his body position like? Um, what does his face tell you about how he feels? Um, uh, Vivian is saying here, and I'd like to read it out if you don't mind, lovely, so they value art more and learn to make connections. And you sum it up so well, I think, because when you talk about art and when you dedicate time to, to paintings or to modern art, any kind of classical or modern uh, paintings in your in your lessons, then students learn to value them and they will see that, that they they have lots of meanings and they they have value and then if you spend time on them they get it that there's value in it and then it it helps them make connections then the, making these connections is what's really really matters here and and what they need to learn to actually be more critical and more uh, aware readers and thinkers so here again 12th night act two scene five <laughs> 